Welcome back to the class on neural dynamics. After these mathematical detours, we are now back to the main flow of the argument for this week four. We have reduced the model of Hodgkin Huxley from four coupled differential equations to two differential equations. We are left with two variables one for the voltage, u, and the second one, an auxiliary variable called w. We are now going to exploit the mathematical structure of this two-dimensional system and analyze the behavior in the phase plane. And now I'll explain what this means. So here is again our system of equations. If we follow the reduction steps that I've explained, starting from the hodgkin axley model, we arrive at this kind of situation, which I need to explain. So, the horizontal axis is the voltage U. The vertical axis is the auxiliary variable W. Now, this is a complicated system of equations. F of U and W is itself some kind of nonlinear function. However, a nice way of getting some insights into the dynamics and insight into the type of functions that we have at our hands, it's useful to look at all points which have no change. All points that have no change in the voltage, the set of points with du dt equals zero is called the u null climb. Suppose the stimulus is zero, then the u null climb corresponds to all the points where f as a function of u and w is zero. And this is what we have here. This is the set of all points where the change du dt is zero. Now we can do the same thing for w and look at all the points which have the w dt equal zero. Well, these are the points where the function g of u and w is zero. And that's for our Hodgkin axonal model reduced to two dimensions. That's this set of points. So we have two curves called the null clients of the system. Now there are very special points where the u dt is zero and the w dt is zero. These are the points where the two lines cross. These are called the fixed points. U dt and dW dt are both zero, which means there's no change at all. Once the voltage U and the auxiliary variable W sit here, they no longer change. This is the first fixed point, second fixed point, third fixed point. It turns out that this fixed point is stable. So, the null clients allow us to find graphically fixed points of the dynamics. However, with null clients we can much more, we can do much more than just finding fixed points. And to see that, let's look at a somewhat simplified model. This is called the Fitzhugh Nagumo model. Again, I have a stimulus which for the moment I set equal to zero. And this function f of u and w has a u dependence u minus one third u cube minus w, it's missing here, minus w plus r times i, which for the moment is zero. Now, if we look at the zero point at the u node line, the u dt equals zero. So the left hand side is zero, 
the current is zero, so I can put w to the other side, and I find w is u minus one-third u cube. And this is a function w takes a value of zero if u is zero. It also takes a value of zero if u is square root of three. And it starts with a slope of one. So the function will more or less look like this. And then it's symmetric. So roughly, it's something like this. And then I have my W node line, but the W node line is linear. dw dt equals zero. That means W is B0 plus B1 times U. Now let's put both constants equal to 2. So if u is 0, then w takes a value of 2. And moreover, it has a slope of 2. So roughly, my w naught line, the set of points with dw dt equals 0, is a straight line which passes through 2. The two lines cross here, so this would be the fixed point. These are the first steps. But now, what can we do with this kind of graph? I promised that we can do more than just finding the fixed points. In fact, we can look at the flow in this kind of graph. And this is now redrawn, the same kind of figure. The u naught line is the red line. The w naught line is the blue line. And my fixed point is here. We know that if the system is here, then there's no change anymore. But what can we say if the momentary value of u and w is here? Well, we know that the voltage will change because all the points where the voltage does not change are on the red line, and this point is not on the red line. We know that W will change because all the points where W is constant would lie on the blue line, and this is not the case here. So let's consider a small time step delta T. In a small time step delta T, I expect a change delta U, which is the u dt times delta t. I expect a change of w, which is the w dt times delta t. Or I can write it as the u dt dw dt times delta t. So I expect that in a small time step, there's a change of u. This is the speed at which the system moves in the, vol in the voltage direction. And this is the speed at which the w variable moves. So the flow might be like this. This would be delta u, and this would be delta w starting from this point u of w, u and w. Now there's something interesting now happening on the null lines. On the null line, I know, on the u null line, I know that the u dt is zero. But that means that the change in the u direction the u dt is zero. Delta u is zero. If delta u is zero, then arrows, the flow arrows, must be vertical. At this point, I don't know yet whether they would be vertically upward or vertically downward. 
Similarly, on the W null client, I know that the WDT is zero. If the WDT is zero, then there is no change in, in the direction of W possible, delta W is zero. And that means the direction of flow must be horizontal, either leftward or rightward pointing. Now, how do I know whether the arrows point towards the left or towards the right? Well, one way to find out is to evaluate our equations at some point. For example, I take this point, u equal 1, w equal 0. I insert this into this equation, and for the model that I discussed before, with a set of parameters I discussed before, I find that in this case, at this location, the flow would be slightly upward and slightly to the right. Now, as I get closer to the red line, the upward component remains, whereas the horizontal component disappears, and therefore the flow here must be upward, as I indicated. Similarly, as I move closer to the blue line, to the W null line, the vertical component disappears, but the horizontal component remains. Therefore, the flow is towards the right, as indicated. Now, the WDT has a certain is zero here, but the UDT has a certain value. As we get closer to the fixed point, this value of the UDT gets smaller and smaller because at the fixed point, the length of the arrows is exactly zero. Now, on the other side of the fixed point, the direction of arrows has changed. The same is true for the UNOL line. Arrows get smaller, they turn at the fixed point, and then this is my total diagram. Now, what does this mean? This, mean that, this means that if my momentary value of u and w sits here, then the system, the dynamics will move the, the, the momentary value upwards. If I sit here, the dynamics will move towards the left. If I sit in between, well, I cannot say exactly what the angle is, but I know that it's some combination of upward and leftward. And so, I can write down the flow in the regions between the node lines approximately. I know roughly the direction of the arrows. So, what does that mean? Suppose I start at some arbitrary point, like the point here. I know at this point the flow is in this direction, but then I'm here. I know at this point the flow is again in this direction, then I'm here. I know at this point the flow is vertically upward, then I'm here. At this point, I'm in the region where the flow is upward and towards the left. Let me draw it like this. I'm here. I will follow the direction of flows. I will pass here horizontally. I will move down. I will move vertically down. I will follow the flow here. And in the end, I will end up at the fixed point. Once you have constructed the flow pattern, as I did with the blue arrows here, you can basically read off the dynamics by just following the flow. The flow carries you along. It's like throwing a little wooden stick into a lively river. It's taken along by the flow until at some 
point it may stop. There might be a fixed point where it gets stuck. Now this is a simplified scenario here, hand-drawn. You can think of other situations like this one here, again a Fitzhugh Nagumo model with a slightly different set of parameters so that we have fixed points. Let's start at some arbitrary initial conditions, say here, I follow the flow, I follow the flow, and I would end up here. Let's start with an initial condition here, I follow the flow, I follow the flow, I go here, vertically downward, I follow the flow, I end up here. So, from any initial condition, I can construct flow patterns which will end at one of the fixed points and in this case we would have two stable fixed points here and there. This fixed point is unstable, the flow is away from the fixed point. Let me summarize this. We made all this effort for reducing the hodgkin axley model from four equations to two equations and yes it was worth the effort because once we are down in two dimensions we can analyze the dynamics graphically. In this lecture, I've introduced the idea of flow patterns, I've introduced the idea of null clients, and in the following lectures, we will exploit these very ideas to really get a deeper understanding of why neurons spike, when neurons spike, how neurons spike. We will discuss thresholds, we will discuss type 1, type 2 behavior, everything will become transparent in the phase plane during the discussion of the dynamics in two dimensions. Please take a moment and answer the quiz questions before you go on to the next lecture.